what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Pixel Experience Plus ROM on this device. Let me show you the about phone section here in the Android version. Of course this is based on Android 10. The security patch is latest of June 5th 2020 and the Google Play system update version says May 1st 2020. Here the stock kernel is perf G2146 some kind of kernel and you can see the build number over here. And this is the 13th June 2020 build. This is the Pixel Experience Plus ROM by the way, not the normal version. The ROM is working great. Everything feels a lot smoother than it used to. But first, let me talk about the stock launcher. To the left, we have the Google's Discover page. And swiping down gets you to the notification panel. Swiping up gets you to the app drawer. Simple enough. And double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen is not there, but double tap to sleep in the status bar and stuff is there. This is the pixel launcher as by default over here. Not a lot of customizations are there, but there are these suggestion disabling options. So I like it. And the wallpaper I have been using is the MIUI 12's live wallpaper. I'll link it below if you want the wallpapers. So here the widgets and stuff as you're noticing working super fine. Now talking about flashing the ROM, you need to remember some things that are like you need to be on the latest firmware which is the MIUI 12.0.09 that is the latest firmware for Indian Redmi K20 Pros and even for global I guess. So I'll link the firmware if you do not have it. Use the latest Orange Fox recovery which is R10.1 underscore 3. With that recovery if you are coming from a custom ROM just wipe cache Dalvik system data and vendor 2 if you are not on the latest vendor. But if you are running a ROM with already the 12.009 vendor then you do not need to flash it again. I flashed this pixel experience ROM from the Bliss ROM so I wiped cache Dalvik system data and just flashed the ROM file with fcrypt disabler and rebooted. Because my storage is decrypted I flashed the fcrypt disabler otherwise you don't need it if your recovery asks password you do not need the fcrypt disabler you just flash the firmware the rom file and reboot but if your storage is decrypted and your recovery does not ask password then you just like flash the firmware rom file and the fcrypt disabler and you reboot and if you are coming from ui you need to format storage once now the stock camera here is this kind of old cyanogen camera as you can see cyanogen mod camera or snapdragon camera here so I don't really like it but the front camera and stuff everything is working with this but yeah this is the stock camera by default present. There is no option at all to switch to the other lenses or something so I'm not gonna use this camera that's why I also installed this Google camera 7 APK. If you don't have the APK here is a card for you. Night set and stuff with this Google camera 7.3 version 1.9 is working fine with this Yonix Google camera with all the lenses. Now in the system panel we have the advanced settings and I have also enabled developer options that's because there is this advanced restart option and use this default USB config to file transfer just for convenience. And of course we do have this system updater here so you can check for updates anytime or whenever there is a new update you can flash it manually too like if you have decrypted storage you can just flash the latest build with fcrypt disabler and reboot that will work you should not wipe anything when you are updating now there are also some more things like status bar over here we have this network traffic indicator or monitor you can enable it if you want to i use a separate app for that this internet speed meter and here we have the system icons headset bluetooth etc icons are there if you want to enable that for some reason there is no vaulty icon which does not appear i guess over here and in the clock position you can change the clock position to center or something if you want that you can change am pm style to like this as you can see you can change it to hidden then the normal one and the small one you can also enable seconds if you want that to show up on the top and then we have the battery status style you can choose it to icon portrait or circle and text then we have the battery percentage changing position we have next to the icon and inside the icon option over here then brightness slider you can change the position of it to i guess then we have the auto brightness and brightness control by sliding a finger on the status bar as you are noticing this decreases the brightness and increases it if you swipe on the status bar this is a really handy feature and i use it as you guys know and quick pull down is there you can choose it to right or left then we have the visibility settings and then the column and row numbers for the quick toggles here we have the quick toggle animation style you can change it to flip or rotate if you want to let me go back to the buttons here we have the system navigation gestures of course the android 10 gestures are working fine here not a problem and if you go into the settings these are the settings you get for the gestures and two or three button navigation is there too let me go back to this edge long swipe action you can set to these many options this is for if you swipe from this edge to this edge like if you hold the swipe that's what will trigger these many options you can set whatever you want 
and here we have the power menu inside here we do not get the advanced reboot or something so that's why it is present in the developer options let me go back we have the end call disabling on lock screen and then we have the long press for torch too if you want to use that whenever you have locked your device we have this kind of volume button settings we have the control playback and stuff but there is an option to show the volume panel to the left side so that's how it is we have the live caption mode then we can expand the volume panel like this and in the gesture settings we do have this swipe to take screenshot and this is the asus kind of screenshot as you're noticing we have this kind of long screenshot and edit settings now we have this pop-up camera settings too so from here you can have the camera led and then you can have this kind of sounds I will put it to disabled I don't like this but yeah the sound should work fine in general mode right now my phone is in silent mode so that's why it did not work before I show you the face unlock speed let me show you the quick settings panel first here is how it looks like we have the heads up disabling option always on display is there dark theme and stuff is working super fine you should not worry about it and in terms of the toggles here is all we get we have a recorder and then anti flicker mode is there these are for the apps so we do not have the FPS info kind of settings here, I think. Let me click on record. And as you can see, it started recording right away. So this is the stock Android kind of screen recorder. It is not the oxygen screen recorder. So you cannot change the frame rate and stuff, I guess. And of course you can trigger Google Assistant just from anywhere by doing this, like swiping up from these corners, just like this. So right now, let me show you the face unlock speed and by the way, in the security, as you can see, the play system update updates automatically after you reboot, so that's cool. Let's tap next. Here we have an option which says bypass lock screen. I'll select that. Let's click done. Let's double tap on here. Okay, so I have to swipe up, then it unlocks. Let me do it again. So we have to swipe up to like use the face unlock. Let's disable that. Skip lock screen. I'll enable this. I don't know how it is disabled already. Well, I don't see a difference here. So right now, let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed from the always on display. And it worked. Now let's try with the left thumb. Okay. We are on the always on display and it worked again now let me try from the lock screen itself works fine now let's try from the lock screen again and it works fine works 100 percent of the time the fingerprint scanner is very reliable here let's try with night light turned on now from always on display works left thumb always on display night light turned on okay it still works Let's try from the lock screen. Worked, unlocked. Now with the left thumb from the lock screen with night light turned on and it works again. So the fingerprint scanner speed accuracy is 100% here. It works 100% of the time. So no issues with the fingerprint scanner. Yes, it is not the fastest, but yeah, it unlocks the device almost all the time. Now, let me show you the battery settings. Here is how it looks like. We have the screen on time on the bottom. Then we have the last full charge settings. Then battery saver mode is there if you need that adaptive or auto battery is there and then optimization for this kind of profiles per app is there if you want to see the full usage you can click on this battery usage and you can see the full usage from here here are some screenshots about the battery life that i got from this rom i would say the battery life is really decent i do not have any issues with the battery life on this rom it can definitely last you a full working day easily without any issues and the 18 watt fast charging works flawlessly here too so you should not worry about fast charging on this rom moving on to the display settings here we have the dark theme you can schedule that even the night light you can schedule that then we have the adaptive or auto brightness live display is there and here we have the rgb control of the screen then we have the hue saturation intensity contrast control of the screen then inside styles and wallpapers this is how it looks like and for accent colors you can go here select a custom theme then you can try to set up and as you can see these are the eight colors you get you do not get much more from here this is all the accent colors you get here you do not get a lot of customizations of course it, this is the pixel experience plus rom so you gotta have that stock android kind of experience and these are the stock wallpapers present by default we have these like live wallpapers you can download them from here and also inside living universe these are the wallpapers which are there and you can download any of them from here 
and this color settings by default is set to boosted let me scroll down we have the lock screen display where the skip lock screen settings over here too and then we have the always on display and stuff new notifications and stuff is there and we have some more options if you want that then we have the double tap to sleep and double tap to wake both are there so double tap to sleep double tap to wake both are working now here we have the wake up on plug disabling option if you want that i disable it usually then we have the anti flicker mode or the dc dimming mode this is working totally fine you should not worry about this feature now inside sound settings we have the mi audio direct and here we have these many options as you are noticing of course and the sound output via the headphone jack and bluetooth as well is really good over here on this rom so you should not worry you also have this hi-fi audio option if you want that then we have vibrate to indicate call status touch vibration etc those things are there then we have the live caption mode or something vibrate for calls are there too the drm info shows as level one here so you should not worry about netflix or amazon prime videos working on 1080p and this rom does pass this safety net test right out of the box so you should not worry about using google pay or any other banking apps you do not need to flash magic just for the banking apps this is how the stock in call ui looks like we have the video call option but there is no call recording option by default but yes volte calls and voice over wi-fi both are working fine here so you should not worry now let's just open some of the apps and show you guys the app open up speeds and the ram management on this rom let's open facebook Twitter, Play Store, Spotify, Instagram. Now let's open Amazon. Now let's open Flipkart. So now let's open all the apps from memory again. Chrome, File Explorer, Facebook, Twitter, Play Store, Instagram, Spotify, Amazon, Flipkart. So yeah, all the apps stays in memory and you can switch to any app. And as you can see, this is still in memory. The, even though this is a 6 GB RAM variant of the K20 Pro, the like memory management on this Pixel Explains ROM should be really, really great. You should not have any issues with like this kind of memory management on this ROM. And in terms of gaming, if you want to play some heavy games like PUBG or Call of Duty, yes, you will get the highest settings possible here. You should not worry about it. And here is the Android to and Geekbench score on this ROM. So thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel down there if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye now.